Baptism is a sacrament. Sacrament, roughly translated, means holy thing. These are ways that God has promised to come and be with us where we are right now today. We don't have to wait until after death to experience this gift. Through baptism, our life becomes a journey between what we are and what we're meant to be. But in both places and both cases, we are united with God. Through sacraments, we experience a special gift of God called grace. Sacraments are God's grace coming to us in a way we can see, hear, taste, smell, and touch. God knows we need physical, tangible assurance that God is here. That's what sacraments are for. Grace is a gift from God that transforms the things we are and experience in a broken world into the things that are meant to be. It turns our loss into love, our failure into forgiveness, the sin of the world into salvation. God touches us through sacraments. They're not symbols. They're not designed to change what's in your mind. They're real. You're real. God is real. The water is real. God doesn't change what's in our minds through the sacraments. Instead, when God touches us, God changes us and the world around us. Now you're going to ask, isn't God with me everywhere? And absolutely, God is. You can find God in a forest, in the sunset, in your kitchen, or in the eyes of your child. But not all of us see these things the same way. Your nature trip might be my nightmare, but we're not forced to agree on how and where we see God, because God promises to come to all of us through the sacraments. Because God is here in this time and place for all of us, we can be assured that God is with us in every time and place for each of us. In order to be a sacrament in our church, two requirements must be met. First of all, God has to have promised somewhere in the Bible that God would come to us in this way. In the case of baptism that happens at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus commands his followers to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he would be with them to the end of the age. Of course, Jesus also got baptized himself in the River Jordan. The second requirement is that it has to have a physical element, something we can see and touch, a tangible way that God comes into the world and touches us. And of course, in baptism, that physical element is the water with which we are baptized. It's not holy water, it's not specially blessed, it's ordinary tap water, just like we use and see every day. But that is the joy of it. To understand what baptism does, you first have to understand the state of the world in which we live. From the moment we are born, we are in need. Our first thoughts coming out of the womb are, I'm cold, I'm hungry, and who are you? And that need to reach out and fill our hunger never really departs. We continually eat and yet we are continually hungry again. To live as a human being is to live with an emptiness inside. Left to our own devices, we tend to view the world around us as there to serve us. We use experiences and objectify other people in order to fill an emptiness inside of us that ironically can never be completely filled. If you've ever sat down with a pint of ice cream when you're sad, if you've ever been 14 thinking, oh my gosh, if I don't get to go out with this person, I will never be whole. You know what this feels like. The problem is nothing we try to put into that space ends up filling it. We objectify the world in vain. And we're left with the question, that baptism answers. What can fill infinity except infinity? Being filled with God's infinite grace does not leave us unchanged. 
Baptism is a transformation as big as life and death itself. It's actually a drowning and a rising. We are completely inundated with God's Spirit and everything that we were, that empty, grasping, selfish self, drowns in the baptismal waters. And when we rise again, we rise to new life, no longer empty, but full. This drowning and rising unites us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross and Easter morning. It leaps through time and space, and we too, our old selves, die with Jesus on that cross, all the sin and emptiness that we bring along with it, and we rise again on Easter made anew. This has a dramatic change on how we view and conduct our lives. Now, instead of operating from a place of emptiness, objectifying everything in the world so we can stuff it inside us, we operate from a place of fullness, full of joy, full of love, full of peace and grace, overflowing to share with the world around us in God's name. Let's talk for a second about what baptism does. We have a cup here meant to represent us or the world. But look, it has a hole in it. It's broken. Nobody's perfect and nothing in the world is either. So when we take this cup and we take something from the world, try to pour it inside, look what happens. It fills for a second, but it pours out. And now look, my cup is empty. But baptism is like an infinite faucet of God's love and grace pouring into us all the time. And sure, it still pours out, but it never stops. So the cup is full and even our brokenness becomes just another way that God shows God's love to everyone around us. Operating from a place of fullness instead of emptiness changes everything. Now, instead of needing to stuff food inside of us to make ourselves feel better, we find joy in sharing food with others who are hungry. Instead of needing a relationship to make ourselves feel whole and sound, we pour wholeness and love into each other through our relationships, growing each other instead of taking from each other. Being baptized does not mean that we will never sin again our old self still rears up with its old desires. But when we do this as baptized people, we confess that we are chasing after something that has already drowned and died. And we do not expect goodness and life to come from something that is dead. Instead, to find life, we walk into life. Now, fortunately, when we do make those mistakes, we remember that baptism is a bath that washes away our sins and fills us up again. Sins are the things we do wrong. They're also things that are done wrong to us. And baptism does not prevent or make up for sins. Instead, it makes the effects of sin not the central thing in our lives. In that way, baptism is like a continual shower. The physical waters that we experience in baptism don't last forever. That would be like annoying torture. But the waters of the relationship with God's grace continue to flow over us every moment and every day. So when we experience wrongness, whether it's something we do or something that's done to us, Baptismal waters wash away the stain of that wrongdoing, making us clean. So when God looks at us, God does not see the wrong, but sees the cleansed and beloved person we are living in baptismal grace. Nothing bad that happens to us defines us as strongly as God's grace and love. Being baptized doesn't mean we deny wrong in ourselves, each other, or the world. Instead, we receive a new identity that is stronger than wrongdoing, beloved, cared for, and full. When we look at ourselves in the mirror as baptized people, we do not see primarily the flaws in ourselves. 
Instead, we see a beloved child of God. When we look at each other across the world through the eyes of baptism, we do not see people to fear or condemn. Instead, we also see beloved children of God. Baptism changes how we view ourselves and how we operate with the entire world around us. It's exactly what allows us to turn to our child when they are five and have just colored on the walls and we say these crayon marks will not define you or define our relationship. It allows us to turn to the teenager whose heart has been broken and say you are beautiful and you are loved and nothing will change that. It allows us to walk through those moments when we are rejected or hurt or despised or told we're not good enough. We are able to stand up and say that definition of good enough is not all there is to existence. There is something more and that something more flows through me and my life infinitely, no matter what happens, no matter what anyone says or does. That's the best thing about baptism. Where there is no sin, there is no need for death to be final, to end sin. Death in itself was only a response to our brokenness. Nothing broken can live forever. But when brokenness and sin are filled up, guess what? We get to live forever too. But when we are washed clean and filled infinitely, now death has no final purpose. Though we may die physically, we know that that is not the end of our story. In baptism, in infinite grace, we are united with life eternal the way it was meant to be. We don't have to wait until after death to experience this gift. Through baptism, our life becomes a journey between what we are and what we're meant to be. But in both places and both cases, we are united with God. Now that community around us of God's children, which spans as wide as the world, is absolutely an integral part of the baptismal life. In baptism, God publicly claims us as God's child. Now we know that we're God's children anyway, but there still is something important to that public declaration in front of the world that we are claimed this way. It's the same reason we name children or have birthday parties or get married to each other. Because even if two individuals know something is real, it has a greater effect when it becomes real in the community surrounding those people. Baptism changes how people view us. We have been claimed publicly as a child of God and we deserve to be loved and affirmed and uplifted. Baptism also connects us to others and changes our responsibility to them. They too are children of God and we now have the responsibility to uplift and love them. We are together serving each other, accountable to each other, loving each other and the world around. Baptism is the sign that we can trust in each other, that we will do these things and live for this central purpose that is beyond ourself and our selfishness, that is full of goodness and grace. Together, as baptized people, we all get to witness that God is still present, still working among us, and still loving us every day. Together, as baptized people, we get to share the wonderful news that we are forgiven, that brokenness and emptiness do not define us, that joy and peace are meant to spread throughout the world. Our baptismal lives together become a witness to God's goodness for his people 
and for everyone that we see. That is a special and wonderful calling that we all share through this sacrament.